Hello and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be showing you how to conduct a mock test and record driving faults using a DL25. So I'll be attempting to use the same wording that would be used by an examiner on a real driving test. And we're also going to be looking at the faults as we go through the video to correctly identify them and then figure out where we would put them on the DL25. As you'll see, not everything went to plan. So I had planned a route, but early in the test, uh, the candidate went the wrong way. So I had to think of my feet and think of a different route, which kind of compromised me when we got to the independent drive, as you'll see, because I wasn't very slick at giving the directions with which signs to follow. Okay, so our candidate today is Reem. She's from Saudi Arabia and she's got her real driving test next week in Norwich, Peachman Way. This won't be her first attempt. And so we've got Tim, her instructor, sitting in the back. He's a PDI, interested to sort of see how a, a mock test is conducted. So I've agreed to do that with him. And hopefully we'll identify any learning needs that Reem can address in time for her driving test. Okay, quick disclaimer, I'm not a driving examiner and never have been. So everything here is based on my personal opinion, formed from experience of sitting in on driving tests and live listening to numerous examiner feedbacks. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Green, thank you for agreeing to be recorded for doing a little mock test. Yeah. And you've You've got a test coming up next week mm -hmm. here in Norwich mm -hmm. and um, it's not your first attempt so you've got a bit of experience of what how a test works mm -hmm. and have you done any mock tests with Tim, mm -hmm. in, your instructor there? Yeah. So you've never met me, <laughs> you, you don't know me and um, yeah so what we're going to do, we'll do, do a little mock test so I'll explain how that's going to work. Mm -hmm. So. It will last about 40 minutes mm -hmm. and you'll be driving on a variety of road traffic conditions. Um, the test will include one manoeuvre, something mm -hmm. you've been practicing with Tim, mm -hmm. possibly an emergency stop mm -hmm. and there'll be a period of driving independently, mm. which I'll explain when you need to do that bit. Um, we've already done eyesight license check, that's mm -hmm. done. And um, I'm going to just ask you a question. A, a tell me question. So could you tell me how you would check if your brake lights are working properly? Uh, so can you repeat that question? Yeah, how would you check if your brake lights are working properly? Brake light uh, should be a switch over the switch and press the brake pedals and see the, the reflect in window or ask someone to show me. Brilliant, good. Thank you for that. And um, so what we'll do, we're going to get on the move. So just before we do it, just mm. have you got any questions? Mm. How are you feeling? You all right? I feel right, yeah. You relax. Yeah. You be you. <laughs> and if, if you, well, just, the, I know the examiners don't say this, but I just want to reassure you. If if you're not sure of anything, just, just say. Mm. You know, if I've said something you're not sure, I'll repeat it. Mm. If you end up going the wrong way, don't worry, mm. just go the wrong way safely. Mm. If you make a mistake, don't dwell on it. Just think, right, you know, I've made that. Nothing you can do about it now. Just mm. concentrate on the next the bit and sort of not let that mm. sort of get you down. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be my advice. Thank you so much. That's my tips for <laughs> driving tests. Just relax. <laughs> so anyway, right, so um well, oh, got plenty seat parts are right back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um Oh yeah, I need to say that. I haven't said that bit ever about the directions. So what I'd like is to follow the road ahead at all times, mm -hmm. unless signs or road markings indicate otherwise. Mm -hmm. And if I need you to turn, I'll let you know in plenty of time. Happy? Yeah. All right, Reem. When you're ready, mm -hmm. drive on. Reem at the roundabout, follow the road ahead. Mm -hmm. 
and at the next roundabout to follow the road ahead. Here Reem has straight lined the roundabout so we would record a driving fault for normal position because there's two lanes on approach to the roundabout and we've effectively cut the lanes. The lanes on the roundabout are not marked. If they were marked it would be lane discipline but because they're not marked we would normally keep to the left so that's why the fault is recorded. On this occasion there was no one near so we didn't affect anyone, that's why it's a driving fault. And at the next roundabout I'd like to turn right, the second exit. Okay, here we have a driving fault for normal position. We're going to be turning right, second exit towards Great Yarmouth. So Reem is approaching in the right hand lane, which is spot on, all good. And as she goes into the roundabout, she maintains that right hand position. So, so far, everything's fine. Okay, so if I just pause it here, remember we are going to be taking the second exit. So this is the first exit with that silver car. So at this point, we want to be planning to move over into the left-hand lane. So by checking our mirrors, popping on a, on a left signal to let that silver car know what our intentions are. And if it is safe and if that lane is available, we would move over gradually into that left-hand lane and be prepared in the left-hand lane to take our second exit. So now if we roll the video on in slow-mo, Reem has decided to stay in the right hand lane which has now invited the silver car to join the roundabout on our near side on the left side. Now that silver car wants to pass us so it goes for an undertake. So now that's going to make it very difficult for Reem to take her second exit. So now here Reem's checking her mirrors, got the signal on and now look we've run out of road and the silver car has gone up the near side. Now Reem has checked her mirrors and made sure that's safe to do that so this is why it's a driver fault and not a more serious fault and at the next roundabout i'd like you to turn left a sign posted for great yard Okay, so here we have a driving fault for use of speed. The speed limit is 40 and we've just crept up to 43 before slowing down for the roundabout. So here Reem has missed her turning, that is not a driving fault, she's done it safely so we will just continue and this is where I'm thinking, oh I need to plan a new route. Ok 
cable. We're at the next roundabout, we're going to be turning right. It's the third exit towards Brundle. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. This time I've recorded a serious fault for normal driving position. It's very similar to the roundabout that we talked about previously. This time we're dealing with a spiral roundabout and the instruction was given us to, we're gonna be turning right third exit towards Brundle. So let's look at it again and break it down as it's happening. So on approach, using the right hand lane which again is spot on we're turning right third exit and as we see it is a spiral roundabout because we've got those hatch markings on the inside so neem is just waiting for a safe gap to go here's her gap into the correct lane going for brundle and she's following that lane round beautifully now at this point this is where it starts to go wrong so just to remind ourselves, we're taking the third exit. Here is the first with that van that we've circled. So what Reem should have done is stayed in her lane, indicated by the green arrow, and that would have spiraled her round towards her exit. But what Reem has done is stayed in that right-hand lane, which is gonna make it very difficult for her to take the third exit. The white van that we circled earlier has now moved into the roundabout and is now on our near side in the lane to our left. Reem now needs to decide if it's safe to move over and take her exit. Now in my opinion there, we were just too close to that van. I nearly considered an intervention, but that van had anticipated what Reem was gonna do and just held back. So on that occasion, we got away with it, but yeah, serious. to pull up on the left in a safe place. All right, thanks for that. So when you're ready, drive on. Yeah, it happened at yeah, go on in. Okay, so here I've recorded a driving okay. fault for position Good. for normal stops just because Reem has blocked a driveway on the near side just parked in front of a low curb. Now as she was pulling in there you might have seen the car jump about a little bit. She didn't hit the curb, she just drove down a, a drain cover. So, um, so that was okay. Okay Reem, I'm going to get you to take the second road on the right. This is the first one, okay. This one? Yes, that's it. Okay, my plan by taking this road was to look for somewhere to do a reverse park on the road or a parallel park, 
but however on this occasion there was nowhere really suitable to do that so we just continued. And at the end of the road if you could turn left. I'd like to pull up on the left before the next part of the vehicle and leave enough room to get out. Don't worry about driveways on this occasion, okay? Just pull up behind that car and leave enough room to get out. Right. Just while you stop, I'm just going to write a couple of things down just, just so I don't forget. So this was a designated stop and the plan was to do an angle start and that's why on this occasion it was okay to block the driveway but unfortunately the car that I planned to do on moved oh, off before okay. we could do it. When you're ready, drive on. I should have been quicker. <laughs> to pull up on the left in a safe place of your choice again okay all right thanks for that and when you're ready drive on
Okay, so here we're approaching a pinch point, so the road narrows on both sides. I didn't see a, a right hand mirror check before we moved slightly out to the right, but as you can see in my notes there that I felt that she's been using her mirrors well throughout the drive and that she's aware of her surroundings. And at the next set of traffic lights, I'd like to turn right. I'd like to pull up on the right in a safe place of your choice. Okay, I'm just going to ask you when, in a minute when it's safe. <laughs> Just to go a little bit further forward, and I don't mind if you block this driveway, so if you just kind of stop in front of the driveway and then come to a stop there, okay? Mm -hmm. You haven't done anything wrong. You want me to say that? Yes, yeah, so just come up there a little bit more. That'd okay. do lovely, thank you. That's it, you just come to a stop there. And what I'd like you to do now is I'd like you to reverse your car, at least two car lengths. Mm -hmm. Keep him raised to be close to the curb, try not to touch it. Mm. And then when you've done that, rejoin traffic. So whenever you really drive on, rejoin traffic. Alright, thanks for that. And at the end of the road, I like to turn left.
Okay, so let's have a look at that roundabout again. So there's definitely a pattern emerging on roundabouts with Reem's normal driving position. So here I've recorded a fault because she's stayed out in the right hand lane. Now we have to listen to the direction carefully here. So the direction was given as follow the road ahead, third exit uh, towards Norwich. So what, what Reem has done is stayed out in the right hand lane. When the left hand lane was available, she could have moved back in there and that would have made that the normal driving position and therefore she wouldn't have got a fault. She didn't affect anyone, but nonetheless, that is a fault. Okay, so let's take another look at that. Here Reem's preparing to take her exit and she's seen a hazard early on and she's managed to check her mirrors, signal, change lane, stationary lorry on the left. I mean, if she wasn't seeing that, that could have been a whole different matter. So really good driving, well done Reem. Okay, so we're approaching a change of speed limit of 40 miles an hour and Reem's a little bit late seeing and responding to that sign. So yeah, she's still going for Norwich. I thought the sign might have been covered there, so I was going to give you a bit of help. Now I'd like to pull a signs for Crover on the A140. No, it does actually. It's because you took me off my route. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. signal and just keep going round the roundabout. Just stay on the inside and we'll just keep going to go round. And then if you could take the next exit, okay? So the next exit. And now continue to follow those signs to chrome, okay?
still going for Proma. I'll let you know if that changes, okay? Okay, so we're just leaving the dual carriageway into a new road. There is no change of speed limit, no street lights, so no signs saying otherwise. So we could assume that this is a 60 miles an hour road. However, Reem's not sure and she gradually gets her speed up to 30 and doesn't really make much more progress than that. On this occasion, there are no vehicles affected behind, so we drive a fault.
Marie, when it's safe to do so, could you put on your rear window demister? That's it, yeah, left, you're good. Okay, so let's have another look at this right hand bend here ream it's just coming over the center markings in the middle of the road so normal driving position fault recorded uh, could have been a bit brisky if there was a vehicle coming the other way We'll pull up on the left where we started, just put a pull into this little side road, it's a lay-by, we'll just go 
point nose in and then just come to a stop. That'd be there, lovely. And then you can turn the engine off. And that's the end of the test. Okay. So unfortunately it wasn't successful today. Mm. And the bit I'd like you to focus on, like between now and when you do your test, is when you turn it your positioning when you turn right mm. at roundabouts. So there's been a few times there. So when we're turning right, let me get a picture, let me try and explain what I mean. Get a little diagram <laughs> of a roundabout that'll help me explain it a little bit better. So now I don't know if you remember we was we were gonna be turning right on a roundabout where we were going towards Brundle and it was the third exit. Mm. I don't know if you can remember that, it's quite near the beginning mm. of the test. So um so you were you were correctly positioned for turning right and that was the exit we wanted and as you've come round you've come round like that and then very late you've kind of come in mm. there and I've seen that like a few times mm. but you come off quite late mm. and so yeah. what's, what's the risk of doing doing that on a busy roundabout if you sort of come in round and then last minute sort of dive over to the left. Sometimes I confuse that there are no line, white line between left and right. Yeah. yeah so okay. in the road we were going into, there wasn't a centre white line like that. Mm. So um, it almost looked like you were going to carry on round. Mm. Any any other cars round, you would have thought you were going to go round. Mm. Now, if there was cars coming in here, then you go round there or round from there. That's the one. It's all, I yeah. say, so I don't know if you know, it's at that point I've, I've, I've had a proper look yeah. and I've done that a few times today where I've thought, oh, I just need to really make sure that it's yeah. safe to do that. So if you could plan your exits. Yeah. So on that one, I did say like, turn right is the third exit mm -hmm. um, because there were two rights on that one. So I thought I'd better specify which right mm -hmm. you meant. So um, so that that's, um, that's what's going on here with these these faults here positioning. Mm -hmm. So that one on its own that I just mentioned about, the Brundle one, because mm -hmm. I, I, of the busyness of the roundabout and the suddenness of the direction change, it was a bit, I thought <laughs> it was a bit risky. Um, and then we've got some other normal driving positions mm -hmm. where you could just return to the left sooner. Mm -hmm. But because I've recorded it, what I'll do is on the video, mm -hmm. as it's happening, I'll say, oh, this is this is where we could have moved to the left sooner. Mm. So it was a f sometimes on roundabouts, sometimes just on normal roads. Mm. Okay, so that is, that's the thing. If you can mm. get that done, you'll be on track. Because it was, a, your drive is very nice, very smooth, like Tim says. Yeah, good use of mirrors throughout. Um, so I just go through the other little bits and bobs that I've got here. One of your normal stops, we just pulled up in front of a driveway. Mm. If you do that on your driving test, if you realise that, what would you do? If you realise you've just stopped in front of a driveway, what could you do to sort of resolve that? Maybe change my position? Yeah, just move forwards. Mm. I wasn't sure whether, because you had the low sun, mm. whether you could see it. It was all, there was a, it was, everything was like a silhouette. It was all like looking into the abyss, into the darkness. So when we stopped, even I struggled to see that one. Mm. So then when I looked, I could sort of got my focus. I thought, oh, we're in front of a driveway. So mm. if you realise that, just move forwards, mm. just correct it, yeah. just fine. And that'll save you getting a fault. Yeah. Um, following distance, this is, we just stopped recently at traffic lights. Yeah, traffic lights, so, so Did you see me do that? <laughs> there, that was that one. Um, Use of speed, just creeping over the speed limit. So we was in a we was in a 40, got up to 43 mm. on one occasion. That was near the start. And then we come off the A47 down a slip road into a 40. And at that point mm. you were you were still at 50. Mm. I put it as a driver fault because you were reducing that speed safely, and I'd prefer you do it safely than break suddenly. So mm. just be mindful of the looking further ahead for your speed limits. Um 
appropriate speed, this was what, on the opposite, on the flip side, from going too fast, you went a little bit too slow, you come off the, off the dual carriageway, again, you'll see on the video, you've come into a new road, a country road, with no street lights. So if you don't see street lights and no speed limit signs, what could you reasonably expect it to be if there's no street lights or signs? Reduce speed? What would you think the speed limit would be if you're on a, a country road, there's no street lights, 60. no signs, 60, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you for some time you were doing 30. Mm -hmm. You did gradually build it up. You didn't affect anyone. But just be mindful, like you sort of could have got on with it a bit there, so you're driving a bit slow for the conditions mm. on that, that bit. Is that minor or a major mistake? Minor. I... You didn't hold anyone up, there wasn't anyone affected, there was mm. no one behind. So it's just a bit of luck there. But mm. on another day, you could get someone like you know, trying to overtake mm. and sort of being held up. So um, that was that. A couple of signals, a little bit late. Mm. Um, one was coming off the dual carriageway. Um, one was a uh, and I think the roundabout where we where you thought you were going around the wrong way, the mini roundabout, you yeah. know, that one, that was quite a late signal. Oh my god, yeah. Um, and then an approach speed, there was one junction where you're just coming a little bit too quick. And I think the root cause of that is you saw it late because mm. you said, oh, this one. And I went, yeah, that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. So, what would you take away from that if you're because that's the causing you to go in a bit fast. It means you're checking your mirrors quite late, you're signalling mm. quite late. Everything's late because you've seen it late. Mm. So um, so once you get a direction, you're going to get directions in good time. Mm. So as soon as you get that direction, think, right, where is it? Look for it, mm. identify it, and then go through your routine. Mm. And then you won't be like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and and that's, that's it. We've got, I've got your manoeuvre on there, so we've done that. So any, any questions from you about anything we've done there today no thank you so much thank you no well thank you for letting me do it um, thank you so much. um I, i've got to apologize because i didn't plan my when you were following signs very well i wasn't quite sure what the signs going to say because mm. I, I was making up as i went along <laughs> because earlier on not that it's your fault you missed a turn mm. and my my the route i had in my head I was like, okay, right, I was making a route up. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, okay, right, uh, yeah, I can, yeah. And I then I was thinking, oh, I didn't know how how long we were out. So I, I was going to think, when did we leave? Was it 20 past or was it half past? I couldn't remember. So um, I was actually literally making up as I went along. <laughs> Not that anyone could tell. That's why I was like, oh, Norwich, north. Oh, sorry, yeah, north, northwest. <laughs> so I was a bit bit rubbish. Yeah. <laughs>